this video is going to be on videos. I uh, went up to my dad's for a little while, and while I was up there, I uh, monkeyed around through his old VHS videos, and I found the video of me driving the 38 Ford chassis that I frame off or stored for a guy. And the guy is actually in the video, too, standing there as I pull in the driveway. But I found a bunch of other clips, too, and I thought I'd incorporate them all in. And one of them shows my 1975 Ford Country Squire station wagon. That was my winter beater. And if anyone knows people from the Rust Belt or Midwest here, they know what a winter beater is. Um, it, it had a 400 two-barrel, a C6 automatic. It was a fully loaded car, power windows, power locks, AC, climate control. I had a stereo 8-track, power seats. I think I had every option Ford had available in 75. Bought it from a friend of mine's dad. So in another clip you'll see we're working on a 78 Buick Regal and there's an Econoline van in the driveway. And Steve, my friend, standing there talking to me that kind of gives me a hard time all the time. It was his dad that uh, bought the car brand new that I bought the car from. I gave him, I think, $200 for it in maybe 1982 or 83. I think the video was made in 83 because that was when my dad first got a VHS video camera. Yeah, all this video is VHS. I just set my GoPro up on a tripod in front of the TV and recorded it. Now, the sound on the 38 Ford is uh, messed up because the VHS camera didn't like uh, spark plug noise, so that kind of, you know, washed out the sound a bit. But you can still hear the old flathead running, and, uh, and you'll see in another part where we're, I kept cars in my folks' neighbor's garage. They went to Arizona every winter, so I stored there as a unrestored mint 72 Ford Country Squire in the garage. My dad bought that car brand new and then the, that was the mustard colored car and then the bittersweet colored car was an 81 Ford Country Squire and that was uh, my like I used that when I traveled and stuff. The 72 had a 400 two barrel. It had this uh, FMX transmission. It had um, trailer towing equipment. My dad used it to pull a travel trailer. That's the only time that car was ever really out of the garage and on the road it had a trailer hook to it. Um, so it was in mint condition. It's still around. A friend of mine bought it some years back and he just recently sold it and uh, it's still all unrestored and looks like a brand new car. So I'm just gonna incorporate these videos together and hope everyone enjoys them. The, by the way, the car that we're brushing off where the two wagons were in the garage was my dad's company car. It was a Chevy Cavalier. And then the other car in the driveway of my folks' house was my Uncle Barry and Aunt Carol's rental car. They were here visiting from Australia. I'm half Australian. They would come here every year for Christmas. They loved having a white Christmas. It's summer in Australia at Christmas, so it would be like... 100 degrees on Christmas. The time I was there at Christmas, it was 105. So, yeah, they, they would come here all the time for to, to be in the snow for Christmas. They thought it was just beautiful. So my uh, cousin's out running the snowblower, my uncle, and they're all shoveling, just having a time of their life in the snow. And another thing, too, my brother used to... Uh, race radio control cars, radio control hydroplanes, my dad fly model airplanes. This is kind of, you know, everything we did RC. So I found some video of my brother running his hydroplane at Stony Creek Metro Park and one of the rangers, I think he got it on radar a little over 60 miles an hour. One, one other note too is I, uh, called the 75 Ford Country Square my battle cruiser and that was kind of I had it custom painted on the tailgate a friend of mine did custom paint work and he painted it just above the trim not real big but like a couple army tanks shooting out the words battle cruiser it kind of looked shot up it looked it was pretty cool I don't know if I have a photo a close up photo of it or not if I ever find it I'll use it as a thumbnail or something on one of my videos 
The 38 Ford chassis, by the way, in that video was ready for the body. I had it completely done, and like I say, the owner came over, he wanted to see it done, and so I drove the chassis up and down the street for him. It had mechanical brakes. That year, Ford did not have hydraulic brakes. They were actually rods with pins and clevises and whatnot that worked the brakes on that car. It was interesting going through all the old videos, a lot of Christmas videos. We always had big crowds at our house. My, a lot of relatives would come from Australia and my grandparents from Lansing. And I even found video with my great grandma. And she's been gone a long, long time. Most of these videos that you're going to be looking at are from the early to mid 80s. I don't think there's, I think 85, maybe 86 is about the latest the videos are. I think most of them run in the... 82, 83, 84, I think that 38 Ford, I think that was uh, maybe 87 or 88, maybe that late, I'm not sure, but it was no later than 88. Yeah, I'm waiting for lunch. And by the way, the Vega, the green Vega station wagon was a Camback GT with a 2.3 liter and a Holley two-stage two-barrel and a Hydromatic 250. That was uh, 1975, that was uh, one of my cars also. The car under the tarp behind the swimming pool, which the swimming pool is no longer there, but that was a 79 Triumph and uh, TR something or other. It was a little two-seated convertible. It was a drug forfeiture car and was in an auction and uh, it only had, I think, 6,000 miles on it and I paid $300 for it. Uh, I think there's a big bad accident up here. I can see the blinking lights up there and traffic has really come to a crawl. So we're going to take Chicago Road here. Take a little different route home. And go by the Union Cemetery that I cleaned up. It's I did finish it up. And Tom, he's like one of the main caretakers there. He volunteers. He said it's the nicest that's ever looked in the 43 or 42 years he's volunteered there. He's take, looked after that cemetery, I think, since that, uh, Dorothy, I think was her name, since she started that first cleanup there. He volunteered and he's been doing it since. And she has long passed away. So Tom is the main caretaker of the place now, and he just needed a little help cleaning it up so I volunteered and he does enough around my house. He'll come over and work in my gardens when I, I'll be gone away and I'll come home and find my gardens different and he can come over and work at them so it's the least I can do to help him out for what he does in my gardens for me at my house. And here we go this is the Union Cemetery. It's the one I cleaned up. Looks really really nice. Does that show up? That's a mobile BP. <laughs> well, you're going to bounce around a little bit because this road's a little rougher, but uh, the uh, 81 Country Square in this uh, video, it had over 300,000 miles on it when I sold it. And it had no rust. The 72 Ford Country Square, I think, had about 130 or 40,000 miles, maybe, zero rust interior everything was like new on that car in the 75 Ford Country Square the Battle Cruiser that had over 200,000 and the Vega I think had about a 135 or 140 somewhere right around in there in the 38 Ford video you'll see a uh, 76 Ford Mustang sitting in the garage that had a 302 in it with a C4 and that car only had maybe 35,000, 40,000 miles on it. It was my mom's car, and she sold it in 90 to buy a new Eagle Talon. And the guy that I restored the did the frame off on the 38 Ford bought it. If you really pay attention, you'll see my uh, 348 that's in the Bel Air, or out of the Bel Air, all cleaned up and painted, ready to go back in. 
the Bosch spark plug banner hanging in the garage. That was from Michigan International Speedway. In 79, my Uncle Ian from Australia spent the whole year here as the crew chief for Jeff Brabham. He raced the he, he raced Formula One cars and uh, I used to go and help out with them too. And uh, some of you old timers may know the Brabham name, Jack Brabham. He was the one that innovated the rear engine Indy cars. Before that, their engines were pretty much always in the front. So just a little, you know, just a little rambling here. I hope this, all this yapping doesn't bore everyone to where they click off my channel. So I'll stop yapping here and we'll get on with the old VHS videos. You're not supposed to stand there and look into the camera. You're supposed to, you're supposed to walk around. Dad said I gotta walk. Around. And you're supposed to take and you're supposed to tell stories about things, you know, as you walk around the house. Go over and tell stories about the stories. Oh look, I can look right out the window and see your beautiful car. Uh-huh. You can tell us about that. I'll zoom out there and take a quick up, close up look at it if you step out of the way. Oh, yes, it is so focusing on the window instead of the instead of the car, yeah. And so what was outside was out of focus. Isn't that interesting? You want to see yourself on telly? I want to see myself on telly. Okay, you walk out to the television area room and well up. Uh, are you ready to uh, picture of mom cooking up supper. We're going to have fried butter for dinner tonight. Oh, I'm cooking the eggs tonight? No, oh, we're going to have eggs for supper. We're going to have eggs for supper. Yeah, we were had a busy day today and we're going to have a real light supper tonight. Okay, well, I think I'll turn this off and quit playing and uh, help you cook up the eggs. And toast and waffles and whatever else we can find that's good. Oh boy. Wish we had some sausage down there somewhere. Yeah, we ate that all up the other night. Okay, well, we'll just turn her off here. Turn around and say goodbye. Goodbye. Everything looks nice till you get to the driveway. What are you saying? I said everything looks nice till we get to the driveway. And then all this junk that's in the drive. Good. Is that up tight enough? That's really good. <laughs> so how long are you gonna be out there, Steve? Three years. Three years. Why don't you get Howard to go with you? Nah, he wouldn't like it. This race car driver and his assistant mechanic here. Howard, shut up. <laughs> oh, he's one of these hard-nosed characters that just don't want to do an interview with the press. Probably no get, comment, no comment. He'll probably get mad and take my camera and smash it on the ground and stomp it and do all sorts of nasty, mean things. Is that what you do? <laughs> Call Mitz. Oh, she, oh, she's over there. Oh, okay. Here, come here. Come here. This newspaper reporter here, TV man, wants to do an interview. You want to With do an the interview dog? on TV? Well, what do you think about the state of the winter? It's a bit long, is it? Yeah, he says it's been a bit long. Are you ready for spring? Yeah. You have some nice, neat trees and shrubs to pee on them, won't you? Yes. It's kind of cold when you go out and lift your leg on a telephone pole. Oh, yes. And also, Mitzi, Mitzi, I'm talking to you. Yes. Pay attention to what I'm saying. <laughs> what do you think of car racing, huh? 
thing is pretty boring. Yeah, nothing too covered. Raise your paw if you think it's stupid. Oh, could you raise your paw? Yeah. She likes treats. You want to go there and play and dog tricks? The camera? Okay. Well, uh, I don't. I washed my face just day before yesterday. Shall we go in? Okay. Say, say so long to hard. We're going in and and uh, see if we can find something in there that's good. All right. That's the end of the interview. Why don't you just talk about your little motor there? Your little 180 horsepower motor. What? Isn't that 180 horsepower? 280, 260. 260 horse? Yeah. And what is it? A 3, 289 or 250? Let's see, it's a 248. What is it? Tell me. A 348. Yeah. I know it was 48 something on there. And what's it going to go in? Is that right? You think it'll make the 59 go very fast? Huh? It'll go down the road all right? Okay. Well, at least we got a picture of it before it gets all greasy and oily. No. Got enough of a headache now without starting at it. Okay, I'm going to go back in the house. We're now just out in the backyard, back of the backyard, out in the field. This is Lynn's golf course, and this is where we fly our airplanes. And just have a great time, show you our gas well, that uh, zoom out there so you can see it better. So we get a little bit of revenue each month from that baby. Hopefully it'll keep producing for the next 100 years. It'll be probably more like 15 produce gas and then it'll start producing oil, hopefully. Walk over to my right so that, or this way. That's it. Now, I'd like to inter have an interview here yeah. by these two beautiful old cars mm -hmm. in, in the background and our house beyond that. Would you like to tell me a little bit about how you enjoy these old cars around? Yeah. You don't? Well, my goodness, anyone with so many cars around must uh, like to travel a lot. Do you like to travel a lot? Is there one? What's wrong with this other car? It's a beauty. Well, it's all the rust, I see. Gee, there's our garden. we got to get that shoveled up pretty quick. You want to? It's a gas guzzler. Qaddafi likes that. Qaddafi likes that. You don't? No. Where's Mitzi? Oh, yes, there she is over by our neighbor's junk pile. What you find, Mets? Find a mouse? Find a mouse? Get a mouse. Get a mouse. Come on. Put this on the set to see if we got any color in this new camera. This is the brand new camera just received yesterday from RCA in exchange for the old one that didn't well, it did, but it, it did everything in purple.
Don't do what? Whatever you're doing. Just, just <laughs> take a pic I'm just taking pictures of the peanut gallery. Yeah. He was saying they don't work real good, but probably they need to be, you know, uh, run in a little bit. Three Mercury Capri at one time too. I had a little two-liter four-banger that actually moved along pretty good. We V6 and six-cylinder cars behind with it, no problem. And the one last car in the video was uh, that white station wagon towards the very end. That was a 1980 Chevrolet Impala. That was one of my winter beaters too. Paid $200 for that car. It was rusted out around the big rear windows. Where the luggage rack went on it had holes you could put your fists through and I did have to replace the left rear door. I fixed the rust on that car and painted it up nice so it looked like a new car and held up really well. It had a 305 with a quadra jet and a hydromatic 350 that was pretty worn out in it. Hit the like button if you enjoyed my video. If you enjoy my channel please subscribe and thank you for watching.